Welcome to the Widow's Oil. This morning I want to warn believers against a evil scheme of Satan which I see um, starting to be visible to me um, and it is something that is currently happening in our world. Uh, the chance is very good that you may see that as well um, and to explain that and to give you this warning, I'm actually going to refer to the um, part in the John 8 where it's about the woman caught in adultery. And to me, it's very, very interesting that it's the same chapter that I've been studying, which has to do with um, the question of who is Abram's seed. Right at the beginning of the chapter, we read this um, story of the woman caught in adultery and I want to say that to me it's a great warning to myself that this is in the same very same chapter so if you um, bear with me I will explain what I mean let us read uh, the story of the woman caught in adultery which is in John 8 um, it reads, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again to the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? Then this they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus um, stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are your accusers? Where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. So we see in the story that the scribes and the Pharisees brought this woman because they wanted to catch Jesus. They wanted to accuse him of something. So that was their motive for um, bringing her. And we see Jesus' reaction because he knew very well what they were, were doing. So um, I want to remind you, maybe you've heard of this term of throwing someone under the bus. Um, it, it just means that, you know, people get used and once their usefulness is over, they're thrown under the bus. It's often used in, in politics or it's well known in communist, communism that they speak of the useful idiots which then get thrown under the bus at a certain stage of a communist um, revolution. Um, now I want to point out Jesus said we must not call people idiots um, because then we are in danger of hellfire and there's a very good reason for that if we if we do that, this is exactly what Jesus is warning, is we are being used of Satan. So Satan uses people, and at a certain time, they are not useful anymore to him, and then he sort of offers them up. So this is what I'm seeing in our world uh, currently, is that there's a lot of 
in the alternative media and even mainstream now um, turning against uh, the Zionists in Israel. And this should make you immediately, you know, weary because why is the the tool of Satan, the media, why is it now suddenly caring about what is right? Where previously it, it just didn't, only when it suits it. So it's like the same as these these uh, Pharisees coming to, to demand, you know, do something about this woman. You see, so now they're turning to the world and saying, but look what terrible thing is, is happening. And you, you know, how they want people to condemn Israel and the, the, the Zionists. That's why I say don't take sides because then you can be manipulated, you see. So, We've got this situation which is being set up because Satan wants the whole world to turn against Israel. That's part of the, the whole plan. The problem is for, for us as Christians is that the Christian Zionist, the so-called evangelical church in America, is, you know, is tied to the hip with the Zionism. So obviously, as as this plays out, they too will get thrown under the bus. And I can't help but wonder if that is Satan's plan. We must also remember, you know, this is, Satan is, um, has many evil schemes and we should be aware of them. And giving the, uh, uh, um, the church in America, which largely consists of what is called the evangelical church and and a great percentage of them is is um linked to this uh, zionism to give them a huge blow would advantage satan it would really so i don't want to go into too much detail about why i think it would advantage satan um but i can just say that the bible speaks of you know, of uh, when you give a blow to the shepherd, then the sheep scatter. So when you give a blow to the church, it advan advantages Satan because the sheep scatter and then the wolves are already waiting. The false prophet wolves are waiting for the, for the sheep. So I just want you to see that thing there. You see, so let us see why um, am I saying the, the Christian evangelical Zionist church is like this woman caught in adultery. Spiritually, we can see it is a, because the Bible calls a, a woman, a woman is, is like a church, a body of, um, well, not the believers necessarily, but let's just call it what we call the church. And adultery, uh, yeah, in James, in James 4, 4, we get the definition of spiritual adultery. It says the adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world, make himself an enemy of God. So when a church aligns with the world and with false things, then um, it is seen as spiritual adultery. In fact, the James 4 is about, it starts with saying, where do the wars and the strifes come from? Um, and, and then it goes on to saying that if we, if we, you know, desire material things, um, then we are seen as an adulterer. So the woman caught in adultery spiritually would be a church that has aligned itself with the world and the materialism and the greed and the, the things of the world. Remember when Peter um, 
Jesus rebuked him and he said, get behind me, Satan, for you mind the things of the world and not the things of God. That was to Peter, you know, who had just before that, uh, Jesus had praised him because he said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, my father um, has revealed this to you. So when we align ourselves with the things of the world, then, you know, it is of Satan and it is serving Satan. So I want to warn us that when this now plays out, we must be very, very careful not to condemn these brothers and sisters in these churches. Uh, as I always say, show them the scriptures. Jesus said, neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more. And that must be our attitude to, to these people, is, is to, to don't condemn them. Because it's going to serve Satan if you do that. But rather go and show them the scriptures and restore them. Because none of us can throw a stone. Most of us have believed the lies told to us about um, the state of Israel. Or we may have um, at times done things where we where we maybe try and serve the Lord by works of the law. Um, we we should point out and expose uh, the 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 false things to our brothers, but it it must be done with the same spirit that Jesus did because Jesus knew what Satan's scheme, evil scheme was against him. Yeah, Paul tells us about it. He says in 2 Corinthians 2, from verse 10, Now, whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So this is one of his devices is that we do not forgive others. And Jesus said, if we do not forgive our um, fellow servant, neither will God the Father forgive us. So if we are going to condemn, um, going to condemn people that are in false churches or under false prophets and we 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 maybe you know tell them that since they doing this they they must also they can't hear the lord and uh they are the seed of satan and we we actually condemn um millions of people in these churches then Satan is going to gain an advantage because it could be, and I strongly suspect it is one of his evil schemes. So let us have this attitude of Jesus. Uh, he, he was aware of Satan's evil schemes and he also uh, doesn't condemn, but he restores.